Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, prefixes and suffixes and how we can use them to the best of our advantage uh, across all of our courses that we teach, uh, specifically Bio 20 and Bio 30. Uh, in my classroom, I have a prefix and a suffix list up on just above the board so that the students can always uh, look at these words whenever they're trying to figure out a new word. But I'm just going to go through some examples of how I might connect these words to different words that they've either already learned or that they're trying to learn. So here are just a collection of six words that I've pulled from um, Science 10, Bio 20, Bio 30, uh, even earlier on in our junior high system. So we can see that we've got a few that include the prefix photo. And I would ask the kids to tell me what photo means. And usually if it's a grade seven, eight, nine class, they're gonna talk about like a photo as in like a picture or a camera. And so I'll extend that and say, well, in order to have a picture, we need to have light. And that's what photo means. So applied to all three of these words, they're all gonna have to do with something to do with light. If I take the first one and I look at photosynthesis, I might ask where they'd find the word synthesis because this isn't a word that I might have up on my prefix wall, it's a bigger one. And they'll usually come up with something like make. So photosynthesis as a whole word is going to use light to make something. And then I might extend that down to this synthesis, because this is another one uh, that we'll learn in some of our courses that students usually can't connect as well. And we know that it has to do with making something because it ends in synthesis, but it has a different prefix. So then we'd look at chemo. And this is obviously, I would do this over a variety of different lessons. I'm just trying to connect many, many words to many different uh, prefixes and suffixes, but I can extrapolate and use my chemo knowledge, chemo meaning chemical, and then they might talk about things like chemotherapy, which is using chemicals as a type of therapy or remediation of something, and that can then be extended into bio 30 when we talk about our receptors, because we're going from bio 20 stuff to bio uh, 30 stuff with our chemo receptors. If chemo means chemical and a receptor is something that's going to pick up information, then it's going to pick up information from chemicals because we're going to talk about a bunch of different types of receptors, thermoreceptors, baroreceptors, whatever it is, but chemo is specifically chemical. If we can continue going on the light prefixes, we're also going to see photosystems within photosynthesis. And then a word that they might not use, but could uh, extrapolate all of their learnings from prefix and suffixes to is photolysis. If photo means light and a system is a bunch of parts that make up a whole, then a photosystem is going to be a bunch of parts working together with something to do with light. And then lysis refers to like breaking apart something. So photolysis is going to either, we can think of it as breaking apart using light or breaking apart uh, in a process that includes light energy. And then taking lysis again, meaning to break down something. And I have hydro as a start, which would refer to water. Uh, so all of these use very similar words and we can use um, previous knowledge to bring in something that they haven't seen before, like photosynthesis talking about in grade seven, bringing up chemosynthesis in bio 20 and chemo receptor in bio 30, or going the other way for our photosystems, photolysis, hydrolysis, all of those. So that's one um, web that we could use. And of course, I wouldn't use all six of these words right at the same time, but there might be a lesson like in Bio 20 where we would be using multiple of these prefixes within one lesson, like mono, di, poly, and saccharide. The ending saccharide is referring to sugar. So then anytime they're looking at saccharide as a suffix, as an ending, they know that it has to do something to do with the sugars that we've been learning about. The prefixes at the front 
are going to tell us stuff also in math that we can apply in math, or we can apply it in bio 30 when we talk about mono hybrid and di hybrid uh, crosses. Mono means one. This is also a prefix that we use in chemistry when naming. Di means two. We could even bring up in here that bi is another prefix that uses two. And where do we see this? And poly means many. And then within that same lesson, because all of those are going to have to do with our carbohydrates or sugars, we would be using the prefix poly again when we talk about another molecule with our peptides, with our proteins. So a polypeptide is going to have many or multiple peptide um, bonds or peptide molecules within it. So all of this could be linked within the same lesson if I'm looking to connect a variety of words just using prefixes and suffixes within one lesson in bio 20. If I extend to bio 30, then I can bring up words from uh, previous units or just from their everyday life. Because if you're dealing with the students that are uh, new to the language, especially, we want to bring up words that they would have seen before, like a thermometer. Thermo, which is also going to come up in our thermoreceptors in bio 20, thermo is going to refer to heat or temperature. And receptor, we talked about somewhere else in this uh, video, but receptor is going to pick up information. Meter means to measure. So if I know what a thermometer does, measuring temperature or measuring heat, or the energy in heat, then I can take that and apply it to thermoreceptor. Receptor being something that takes in information, takes in heat or temperature information. I can then take uh, the word meter again and apply it to something new, a baroreceptor or a barometer. Baro is something I may not have seen before, but I might have heard of a barometer. And that has to do with pressure. So this is kind of helping the kids to figure out these connections on their own in the future. If they were to see something on the diploma or on uh, a test, a context that they don't understand, they can break down these words, pressure. So barometer, if a thermometer measures temperature, then a barometer measures, measures pressure. And if a barometer measures pressure, then a baroreceptor is going to pick up information to do with pressure. But there's also a lot of big um, compound words, and this will be the last uh, example, because our hormones can uh, sometimes be easy to pinpoint what they do, like thyroid stimulating hormones, stimulating the thyroid. But if we have a big word like adrenocorticotropic hormone, even if they're given this on the diploma, to link this back to what it does can be quite overwhelming to some kids. But most of our uh, words in science are going to be linked by O's or at least in a front and an end, a prefix and a suffix. So if I looked at this one, adreno is going to refer to our adrenal gland. So now I know where this hormone is going or acting on. Portico can actually have a few different uh, meanings that we can apply to this. It's going to the cortex but it's also going to be releasing cortisol. And cortex means our outsider uh, outer layer. So our adrenal cortex is going to be on the outside layer. And we can link that back to when we learned about the renal cortex in the kidney, which is on the outside, and renal refers to kidney. Or cerebral, at the beginning of uh, our nervous system stuff, cerebral cortex is again on the outside. Then the tropic at the end is telling us that it is a tropic hormone. So it is a hormone stimulating another gland to release another hormone. Uh, so it's right within the name that adrenal corticotropic hormone, where it is going to go, what it's going to do, and what it's going to release. So teaching them uh, this skill can help them to break down bigger words that you may not have introduced them to or to help them link to previous information, which can really help a lot of our struggling students that struggle with content or with the language. So I hope this helped. And if you uh, want, there's tons of different prefix and suffix lists out there. And we've got some to share within our biology department if you're part of CTR. Have a good day.